Mandalore stands on the frozen planet, a chill passing through Mandalorian armor, stimulating his nerves. As an outcast adopted by the Mandalorians, he had almost forgotten his name and had long been accustomed to being called Mandalore. The tracker in his hand flashed frequently, indicating that the target in the tavern ahead. The tavern door opened and a flurry of snowflakes drifted in. The drinkers looked at the bounty hunter at the door in surprise. The Mandalorian armor on his body was already covered in scars, which showed how many times it had resisted fatal injuries for its owner. This piece of Mandalorian steel armor was worth a lot of money. The hut who was bullying lit up his eyes. He is well known as a local bully in this area and never takes anyone seriously. He walked to the bar and insisted that Mandalore knocked over his drink when he came in. The boss on the side didn't want to cause trouble so he took the initiative to offer another drink as compensation. Mandalore ignored these and defeated the unreasonable guy easily. The mithril man on the side got up and was about to say a few words of thanks when he found Mandalore staring at him through the T-shaped opening on his helmet. The target of the bounty that Mandalore wanted to catch was this Mithroan man. Even if he were willing to pay for a cruiser to give him away, Mandalore would not be moved. Capturing targets in exchange for bounties is his principle, just like never taking off his helmet in front of outsiders. Mandalore walked into the guild carrying his customary pulse rifle. The guild, which had been noisy just now, suddenly became silent. Everyone looked at Mandalore. Only he could capture several targets at once and get the richest bounty. The leader of the guild, Griffkar, ordered people to remove the carbon-condensed bounty targets from the Blade Peak while mysteriously recommending another task to Mandalore. There is no reward disc for this task. The details can only be discussed in person, and the deal is made in person. The reward is too high to refuse. Mandalore took the certificate card given by Griff and came to the quiet alley. Knocking on the deepest door, the TT-8 Elgard robot popped out of the small hole, scanned the certificate card, and the door opened. Mandalore walked into the back room and saw four stormtroopers when he entered. Since the fall of the Empire, the Imperial Army has also fallen apart. Some became mercenaries and some became warlords. It can be seen from the dilapidated armor that their life is not easy. In addition to the stormtroopers, there was also a doctor named Persin who was wearing a clone armband on his arm. Another guy with white hair, Mandalorian, had no interest in knowing his name, but his reward was indeed tempting. The deposit was a piece of Mandalorian steel stamped with the Imperial sigil, and when the deal was done, there was a barrel of the steel. This rare metal has excellent protective properties and can resist lightsabers. It is an important raw material for making Mandalorian armor. The mission is highly classified, there is no bounty disc, only a tracker. The only chain code is the last four digits, indicating that the target's age is 50 years old. With just this bit of information, Mandalore couldn't be troubled. Mandalore walked into the dungeon with Mandalorian steel in his arms. The surviving Mandalorians gather here, and the symbol on the wall proves that their civilization was not destroyed by the Empire. The tools used to forge Mandalorian steel were preserved, so that one piece was enough to make a new pauldron and the rest could be used to help the orphans. Mandalore had this intention, after all, he was once an orphan here. Driving the Blade Peak spacecraft, Mandalore came to the planet Alva-7. Landing on a planet where everything is covered with yellow mud, it is difficult to walk in the mud. After taking just a few steps, Bulig rushed over. Bulig is as tall as a man, shaped like a big fish with two legs and a big mouth full of fangs. Mandalore was caught off guard, his arm was bitten, and Brug tossed him around. Just when he was tired of dealing with it, another Bulig rushed over. Two magnetic bombs hit both Bulegs, helping Mandalore escape the siege. Mandalore looked up and saw Ugnaught riding over on Bulig. His name was Keel, and he was the steam farmer here. Keel was willing to help Mandalore, because when the thing arrived here, it was protected by a large number of Nyctos. There were lots of people who came to look for it, and all of them died without exception. No matter who it is, Keel is willing to help as long as he can take that thing away and restore peace here. Only Bugler can walk freely on the muddy planet's surface. Mandalore rode the tamed Bugler under the guidance of Keel, arrived at the camp in the valley. The tracker showed that the target was within the camp. Mandalore carefully observed the situation in the camp through the scope of the pulse rifle and suddenly a bounty robot IG-11 rushed into the camp. With its head and torso that can rotate, it can shoot 360 degrees without blind spots while traveling, making it a very powerful competitor. Unexpectedly, besides himself, someone else got the target tracker. Mandalore ran down the valley and reached an agreement with the IG robot to cooperate in capturing the target for half the reward. But no matter how powerful the IG robot is, it has its shortcomings. Once it is trapped in a tight siege, it will initiate a self-destruction program. Mandalore, who was suppressed behind the wall by Nikto's laser cannon, quickly stopped the IG robot's stupid behavior. He asked the IG robot to run to the other side to attract fire, while he unexpectedly killed the gunner and seized the laser cannon. After a burst of fire, all the Nikto people were wiped out. Using a laser cannon to break the closed iron door, Mandalore entered the house in the direction indicated by the tracker. The tracker pointing to an egg-shaped incubator with a little green man inside. With a pair of big ears and a pair of big black eyes, he doesn't look like 50 years old. This is probably a race with a long lifespan and the IG robot is about to shoot it with its gun. Mandalore shot first and shot through the robot's head. He would not allow the killing of a child, even a 50-year-old baby.